My name is Savi. Uh, I want to uh, talk about the situation in uh, Nigeria and what is going on with Biafra independence. And listen, I'm not a politician. I have nothing to do with politics, okay? I'm just a, 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 I'm a rapper, musician, and a student, okay? It's just that I take a lot of interest in this particular situation due to many reasons. One of those reasons is that my country, Poland, we also used to fight for our independence. We were trying to be destroyed. People tried to Germanize us. They tried to make us Russians. In the end, we fought for our independence and we got it back. And I also think there is a lot of similarities in Biafra history and in Polish history. And, and you know, this is one of the reasons why I'm really feeling for Igbo people. And I would like to address allegations uh, against Biafra getting its independence that I heard about. And I'm actually quite surprised because there is a lot of evil people uh, who come up with those ideas and allegations and they don't want uh, the independence of Biafra. They believe in one united Nigeria. So you don't have to take what I say as, uh, as, as the universal truth, but I just hope that maybe I will interest you in uh, taking this matter in your own hands and you will go and do some research, check out the facts and what has been going on uh, go out there and spread the word to people at least in my opinion this is a very important issue and we shouldn't just close our eyes especially that european media they rarely talk about what is going on in africa and in the end we all live uh, in this earth okay we are all human beings we all deserve respect and we all deserve to have a good life okay so let's talk about um this issue like Biafrans they want their independence right they are a part of Nigeria right now um, Nigeria doesn't want to give them independence and there is a lot of allegations uh, there is a lot of allegations against Igbos uh, Igbos themselves call Igbos selfish people for wanting an independence okay people say that Mazinam Dikano is a radicalist that uh, he's calling uh, that he is uh, causing a war now in Nigeria that this is all his fault because uh, he is uh, gonna cause a lot of deaths and basically what he does is propaganda and people say the solution is not the Biafran independence the solution is to unite Nigeria and unite uh, Yoruba, Fulanis and Igbos all together and that uh, Nigeria needs a new government who is going to take care of each uh, of all of the tribes equally right because it's not just Yoruba, uh, Hausa Fulani and Igbos there is also different tribes okay and then they say that Igbos are being selfish because they want um, Biafra back they want to separate from Nigeria and they want to basically leave Nigeria out of oil um, and that this is so selfish that they even want to do it so let's talk about it for a minute let's talk about the war let's talk about killings uh, and uh, that uh, Igbos are uh, trying to have a war and this is going to cause a lot of lives and a lot of, uh, you know, bad things to happen. Uh, but I think this is such a stupid argument uh, against uh, Mazin Namdekanu and against Igbos because uh, Mazin Namdekanu uh, has not been calling for war. He has been calling for democratic referendum so people can democratically... Democratically? Right that people can decide if they want to separate from Nigeria or not. And in democracy, uh, it, what matters is what most of people want, right? But Nigerian government is saying no. And uh, they have been saying no for such a long time, but they have no intentions in trying to actually solve this problem at all. It's just Buhari says no, because no. They've been trying to get this referendum for such a long time, okay? And referendums are happening in democratic countries all the time and I'm sorry but referendum is a peaceful way uh, to to get something done right they have not come to uh, the government and Igbos have not started to uh, kill people uh, in the name of Biafra this is not what is happening they have been killed they have been killed they have been killed they have been mistreated for so many years they have been put up with this the government um, the government doesn't want uh, you know, the, the part of where Igbo lives, the government don't care about it. They haven't had Igbo president for like eight years or something. Okay, and basically they feel like they have been mistreated very, very much 
for a very long time. Which brings me to another point. People against Biafra, they say that um, Igbos should just shut up and they should just unite with the rest of Nigeria that this is a progress and development to get the country going. Okay, you know what? This idea is its a very beautiful idea to unite people into one, uh, to give them the common goals so they can have, right, these common goals. Uh, this this common vision of the country together and they can build the country together this is a great vision and I, I have nothing against it it's just that um, if you have been mistreated in your own country for so many years tell me how why would you even expect suddenly like that something is gonna change like I think this is a little bit too little too late you know if Nigeria government done that many years ago then I think that would be doable um, but it's been going on for too long, like Igbos just don't trust Nigeria anymore and they just not gonna start suddenly trusting Nigeria, it's impossible. Like it is against how human beings work, you know, like we can put up with something for, for, for some time, we can try try to, ch to change the problem, but if nothing has been done, the, it comes to the point where you are sick and tired and you don't believe anything that people, government, whoever says because you've been mistreated for too long it's normal like imagine if you are in the relationship right like stupid compare country to the relationship but you know what sometimes let's compare sometimes macro managing has to be done first comparing to micro managing so let's think about the relationship if you are in a relationship and the person is mistreating you um you love this person right and um, you will put up with it for some time because because you want to be with them right you you don't want to break up you don't want to you know cause this pain to another person by breaking up with them but if this thing is going on too long and someone is promising you things they don't deliver uh, if they uh, just blow you off all the time if they mistreat you there's gonna come the point where you will want to break up and you are not going to believe anything they say you are not going to believe that they will change because you have never got a proof to believe that this change is going to come and this is a normal thing this is not being selfish this is not selfishness if someone mistreated you and you don't want anything to do with these people this is not being selfish this is self-protection um, and also, now let's talk about this allegation that the, um, people say that if Igbos are not going to stop uh, fighting for Biafra, there's going to be a war, right? And the war was happening before, that it's going to happen again, that many, it, that many innocent people are going to lose their lives. And, and this, uh, yes, and this is a huge problem. And listen guys, I can't sit here and tell you that you should go to war, you should fight. Um, that would be so hypocritical of me. You know, I was very lucky to be born in a country uh, who already got the independence. I was not living at the times when we had war here. Okay, so um, I, I don't want to be talking in terms of who should go to war, who should not. I, I don't know. But my point is that, like, people say that this fight for BFI independence, independence is going to cause war and uh, kill a lot of people, right? Um, but at the same time, they are saying that um, Nigeria needs a radical change of government, that there has to be politicians who are not corrupted, who care equally about each tribe, um, basically good politicians. So tell me, how exactly do you think that is gonna happen? You think that your politicians are peacefully just gonna resign from, from, from their position in politics? That's not gonna happen, like ever. If you want that to happen, there is there's something, something big has to come, like revolution, you know? Revolution, you would need revolution to, for that to happen. And revolution is also gonna cause a lot of, a lot of uh, people losing their life. So how else is it gonna change? Like seriously, think about it for a minute. You know, this is, it's a great idea. Politicians should change. We should have politics who are not, not corrupted in any way. How are you going to do it? How? Plus you have uh, other countries involved in who is, who is in the government because they are paying those people as well.
So you think this is just gonna happen peacefully and there's not gonna be war, nobody's gonna die? Okay, but let's go one step further, right? Let's assume that the government somehow changed, that you have wonderful politics who actually care about Yoruba and Igbo and Fulani and other tribes equally, right? And that, um, you know, finances are being divided equally, blah, 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 all those things. Let's just assume that happened. Tell me, how, how long do you think that this is gonna last? Because you have millions of Igbos um, who have very strong self-identification as Igbo, not Nigeria. Okay, you can't just change how people feel. And we are not talking about 20 people. We are not even talking about thousands of people. We are talking about millions of people being in the country that they don't identify with. So, you know, there might be peace for a little while, but those Igbos, they are not gonna stop feeling like Igbos. They will still want want their change, even if, even if the government changes and everything, because it's also about self-identification. And uh, Igbos, they used to be a kingdom. They were self-sufficient back in the days, and, and that history stays with them in their heart. Maybe some Igbos may, don't feel that way, but millions of them do. And I think that if you want to uni unite people uh, who, who feel that way and tell them that they are someone else now, they are Nigerians, uh, you know, um, I don't know. I think I think the government would really have to kind of brainwash them, you know. Yeah, basically. Sometimes I think about like if Poland would still be uh, in Germany and we didn't get our independence, right? And um, they would have to make us believe that we are German. You know, maybe, I don't know, maybe there's not such a big deal. Maybe it would be good to be a German person. But then I would have a very uncomfortable feeling knowing that my grandfathers, grand grandfathers, my ancestors were basically Polish and suddenly I'm German. Like, I think it is, you know, I think it is very psychological and it's quite complicated how our brain works. But we really need this uh, sense of who we are because this is a very important base for our development and for our for our life maybe we don't think about it every day but it's subconscious so um, I'm not really sure how people who believe in one united Nigeria want to argument that uh, thinking in a long long-term relations between Yoruba Igbo and and Hausa Fulani especially that the history there has been so bloody people can't just forget People, people are not gonna forget. You may peace them, you know, you may calm them down for some time, but people are not gonna forget. People know who they are and they want, uh, they want to be acknowledged. You can't change that. You would have to brainwash people, basically. And people say that, um, that the attitude that uh, Igbo people have towards Biafra, that this is, I think it's called tribalism, that they think like a tribe not as a nation. Now, I don't think that's true either because um, they used to be a nation. They, it's not like just a random tribe walking around Africa. They used to have their kingdom there. They had a territory, they had their, their government, they have their language, they have their culture, and it was taken away from them. It was taken away from them and they had been mistreated for many years. And now let's talk about real quick about Mazinam Dikan, right? Um, he is calling for the democratic referendum. He is not calling for war. Right now they are talking about the war because it has been self-defense. Like, how do you imagine people, uh, people being attacked, women and children being mistreated? Boko Haram is also coming and killing people for being Christians. And what, you just expect people to just put up with it? Why? I, I mean, every self-respected person is gonna protect themselves. Otherwise, you are a little bit stupid, right? So, I don't know why people assume and say that he's calling for war. He's calling for war because Nigeria caused that war. I mean, Nigerian government, the people from the north, they attacked Igbos. So, what do you expect them? To sit on their ass and just wait and do nothing? 
they want their own country so they can also protect themselves so they can close the borders from the attackers who are attacking and killing them so they have uh, they can uh, have their own government and they can solve their own issues okay and people also say that um, even if they will uh, get their Biafra back you know, it is not uh, it is not uh, guaranteed that they will succeed. They might even uh, become more poor. But don't you understand that they want to ta that they want to uh, take in charge their own decisions. They want to be responsible for their own citizens, their own lives, because they have no power at all. I don't understand. I really don't know why it's so difficult to understand. I I think it's pretty like I think it's pretty obvious. Anyway, guys, this is, this, these are my thoughts about uh, Biafra. And Nigeria and you don't have to agree with me I just hope you will do your own research maybe you can also take a video put it out on social media if you are from maybe from Poland or other country um, just so people know what's up um, yeah let's let's talk about it okay so many people are even asking me like why are you so interested in the situation in Biafra that's not your country like you've never been to Africa and that is absolutely true and uh, I don't know maybe this is weird but like I said I have my reasons why it is very interesting to me and I do care about this situation um, and at the same time I think we are all entitled to our own opinions it's just that we don't uh, have to terrorize other people because of our opinions and I don't think I'm terrorizing anyone I just want to give you my thoughts and you can take them or you can leave them